Over the next several videos, we're going to take a look at geometry mode. Now, geometry mode is a mode that you can put the editor in that allows you to perform modeling operations on BSP brushes in your level. Things like moving components such as uh, polygon faces or vertices around. You can make extrusions. You can even run a lathing operation which allows you to extrude around a, a single pivot point in an arc-like shape. Now, to get into geometry mode, all you have to do is click the geometry mode button located on the left side of your screen at the top of the toolbox. It looks like a little tiny transparent cube. And once you click that, you'll get the geometry tools window. Let's talk just a second about the interface of this window. You'll see it's broken up into three groups. We have a modifiers group, a properties group, and another modifiers group. Now, there is a difference between the two modifiers groups, but I'll talk about that in a moment. Let's just kind of go from top to bottom. This first modifiers group is considered to be the passive modifiers. You can think of these like sub-modes for geometry mode. For instance, you have edit mode, and if I have that active, you'll notice the radio button next to it. If I click on my builder brush, then you'll see that I get this really cool highlighting scenario here that allows me to easily select vertices, faces, and if you're really accurate with the pixel clicking, you can get right to an edge as well and you can manipulate these things around. Now that's what edit mode is all about and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But there are other modes as well. We have brush clip mode which allows us to slice through our brushes as if they were, as if we had kind of a planar cutting laser. We have pen mode which allows us to draw out brand new brushes just by dropping down some points in one of the orthogonal views and a couple of others as well that are specific to selections and we'll talk about those as we move forward. The point is that these are modes that geometry mode can then be placed into so that when we're in pen mode, we're in a mode that allows us to draw out brushes. When we're in edit mode, we're in a mode that allows us to manipulate components. Now down from here, we have the properties window. This is going to change depending on which of the passive modifiers we have selected. You'll see here in pen mode, we have some settings that control things like automatic extrusion of the shape we create, uh, how far we'd like to make that extrusion. If we switch over to edit, we have no properties, and if we go to brush clip, there's a few properties here, and we'll be talking about these properties for each one of the modifiers as we move forward. Now down from here, we have another modifiers group, and these are the active modifiers. These are just a series of buttons, and each button performs a different function. Some of them will be grayed out, others will be uh, available at all times, and really what it depends on is what you have selected. As you make different types of selections, for instance, if I grab a polygon face, you'll notice that certain buttons gray out while others suddenly become active. So it all depends on what you have selected. All right. Now with that understood, let's take a quick look at geom um, sorry, edit mode. Geometry mode's edit mode. That's what I meant to say. Which is pretty easy. It's just a straightforward mode that allows you to manipulate components. As I mentioned, we get the ability to more easily select components, such as polygon faces and vertices. And what can we do with them? We can move them and we can scale them. We cannot rotate individual components, though you can use a component selection as a means to rotate about a pivot. But let's just take a look. I can drag this vertex up into the air, and you'll notice that when I do, we have changed the shape of the brush, but you'll also see that geometry mode automatically splits this face because you made it non-planar. Geometry mode insists that all faces be planar, and so if you make something non-planar, it's going to add an edge to turn it into two planar faces which is pretty standard. If you like to remove this edge, you would need to replanarize all four of these vertices, so you need to make sure that they were snapped back together. Now my drag grid is currently set to four, so getting that right back to its planar edge would probably require that I come over here to the side view, and I can slide that back down. There we go. Now everybody's planar once again. If you didn't like that triangle edge, if you just had to absolutely get rid of that, you can select your brush. So notice I deselected, reselected the brush itself, and we can click on the optimize button, and that'll take out any unnecessary edges. So back over to edit mode, we can click on edges and manipulate those as well. So I can pull an edge up. We can click on faces, and I can manipulate those. Now, as for scaling, we can perform uniform scales, so you can take a face and make it smaller, or if you want to, you can select an edge, and you can scale that as well. So you can start to get some really interesting brushes just by manipulating this around, but I would like to remind you that generally it's a good idea to keep your brushes 
Uh, very, very simple. Now I'm going to reset back to a basic cube by clicking on the cube button, which by default will just take us back to a 256 by 256 by 256 cube. One other thing I wanted to mention is that when you're manipulating vertices, specifically in edit mode, there is an automatic weld feature if you move two vertices to the exact same location. To illustrate this, I'm going to pull my drag grid to 8 just to make things a little easier to manipulate. I'm going to tap the space bar and drag this vertex from the right over to the left. Now notice I'm placing one vertex right on top of the other. As soon as I do that, geometry mode creates one of those automatic edges and these two vertices are now the same vertex. That's really cool if you know it's going to happen and you need it to happen, but if you're not ready for it, it can be a little problematic. So just be aware that if you put two vertices on top of one another, they are going to get combined. Let's go ahead and switch back to a cube. The other thing I wanted to mention is that you can make use of your reference coordinate systems to get some interesting motion. If I grab this edge down here on the lower left-hand side of my box and we slide it out, now I'm going to grab this polygon face. Now take a look at my translation widget. Currently its axes are aligned to the world axes. We can move up in Z, we can move forward in Y. Now I am tapping undo in between these to reset everything. And we can move side to side in X. But those are based on world coordinates. If, I, if you like, you can switch up to local coordinates. Now this is up in the main toolbar. You have your little reference coordinate system drop down. If you set that to local, now check out the translation widget. You'll see that X actually points off the normal of the surface and then Z and Y are also perpendicular as well. So some very cool features. You can really change your brush's shape just right here using edit mode. But that's going to wrap things up for this video. I just wanted to introduce you to the interface of geometry mode and edit mode. And now as we move forward, we'll take a look at some of these other passive modifiers as well as the active modifiers. Thanks a lot.